Here's a question. Brandon in Washington, pronouns are he, him, wants to know if it's better to have faith in something regardless of whether it's true. So do you have like an example, Brandon? Um, I think I do, uh, hopefully. Uh, by the way, it's an honor to speak to you. I've watched all your uh, yeah, debates, et cetera. Um, staunch atheist here. Uh, I was just talking about or thinking about the conscious as opposed to the subconscious. And when we pass away, uh, how long that time is since uh, – I think scientists are at least have a theory that uh, time doesn't exist in our subconscious. Uh, maybe, maybe not, you know, as far as life flashing before our eyes and uh, whatever you believe in, uh, no God involved, uh, you're judging yourself based on what you believe in. And then you're condemning yourself to that certain uh, disposition, I guess. And I'm wondering if it's, okay to shake the belief in like my parents uh who are staunch christians uh, or any religion and have them confused i mean if they happen to pass away with uh their their full mental capacity as opposed to like someone who falls off a building and their their brains are ruined you know what i mean when someone passes away and all of the neurons uh, fire at once and there's not necessarily time uh, in our subconscious or, um, the idea that we can break the conscious to subconscious barrier. Uh, I guess I'm a little, I'm a little confused, Brandon. That. I'm kind of confused. I'm Maybe way can, confused. Can you, can you help me out? Like, uh, what, what's yeah. the main, con what's the main concern that you could like phrase in a, a question or, or a statement or something um, we, could, we could run with? Okay. The, I guess the main concern was, uh, whether it's real or not, um, finding peace at death. Um, I know that sounds like a, a, a fairy tale. Um, I'm not sure how to describe you it. You mean for uh, the person it, that for the person that dies, or for, yes, for that for that for yeah, well, you'd be dead uh, presumably. So I don't know that there'd be relevant form of peace. Yeah, it, it, if in fact, if in fact, brain function and and conceptualization and agency all end at death, how could it possibly be the case that one has found peace? How can you find um, anything I, when you're dead? I guess uh, it, the, depending, I mean, it's still a theory, well, all science is a theory, but uh, the, no. uh, your neurons all, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I thought the theory is where science ends until another one is proven. No, I, uh, maybe it, I'm, not uh, all of science, that, science is the process by which we create models in theories that describe the world. Yeah. Uh, not everything within science is a theory, but even those you said earlier, science has a theory that time doesn't exist for the subconscious. I'm not aware that any such theory exists. Um, maybe uh, hypotheses and hypothetical ideas, but in any case, all the evidence points to when I'm dead, my subconscious is dead as well. So what, how could I possibly find peace if there's no me and no consciousness left to find anything. I guess because at the moment of death would be uh, the same as the moment uh, starting a dream. Dreams can last longer or shorter. No. Uh, and depending on, did, no. did you say no? I'm sorry. Wow. This is all wrong. There is no moment of death. Okay. Death is a process. Um, and so where did you get this idea that at the yeah. moment of the death, it's the same as starting a, a dream? And by the way, what makes you think a dream is peaceful? Uh, the, the, you're like stacking one thing on top of another on top of another. And I the question I asked is, if consciousness ends, that means there's nothing left to find anything. You're basically, it'd be like, I've, I've got a magnifying glass and I can use it to find something small. But if I don't have a magnifying glass anymore, I'm not going to find those things that required a magnifying glass. And so if finding peace requires a functioning mind, then I can't possibly find peace or anything else if my mind is no longer functioning. I, okay, so I, I completely under, I think I understand what you're saying. And uh, I guess where I was coming at from that was... Uh, 
Matthew Alpert, uh, um, the God part of the brain, uh, who was an atheist who talks about how we use that as a fight or flight mechanism uh, from early ages on. And then from just some Michio uh, Kaku podcast that I've read about uh, oh, so you're listening to the lunatic. brain. Uh, I'm sorry, what was that? I'm, I'm just having, I'm poking fun at Michio Kaku. Um, oh. Anyway. Um, yeah, uh, I just um, the idea is that uh, when we uh, when we die, that our neurons all sort of fire off at once. Uh, I, I don't want to get into like psychedelics or any BS like that, but uh, the uh, the subconscious state or a dream or whatnot when we pass away could last a very long time. I think. Uh, would you agree with that, or is that just a no, like a straight up no? Because if it is, I guess the the conversation's over. I just had a yeah, it was a. I mean, you're, you're like a worry of it's, mine. Well, it's so like you're like assuming. You're, you're a, oh, hold on, Brandon. Brandon, if I'm hearing you right, you're assuming like, right? You're assuming properly like a properly functioning brain in the case of, um, of the dream where that's just like not analogous in the case we talk about with death because we're talking about like cell death, right? You there are no neurons firing, right? Or at least there's the process of of that ceasing. And so I'm not really seeing like why that would be analogous because you're taking for granted a functioning brain in one case. So the same yeah. type of property like, in the other case is an analogous. It's almost like you're saying, hey, if I stop experiencing, wouldn't that be a great experience that lasts a long time? No. If you stop so experiencing, if you are experiencing, done experiencing. So if I quit experiencing in the, I mean, every night we close our eyes and just decide to go unconscious for three no. hours a day. And you don't stop. No, 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 no. You do not stop experiencing. Okay. Have you ever set an alarm clock? Has anybody ever woken you up? Yes. Uh, then you uh, don't stop experiencing when you go to sleep. Death is not like sleep. If you stop experiencing, you stop experiencing. And there's yeah, that I, in between stop experiencing and the look, moment. Your, your, your brain is still functioning. Where look, all of the brain is still functioning oh and God, you don't brain, go back into Brian, your vessels for an alarm. Brandon, there, so I'm, I'm reading a book at the moment and it talks about how during sleep, which, you know, I, I have to look more into this because I, I, I'm not the resident Shannon Q. So my, my ignorance creeps in pretty quick, but from what, from what I've gathered, sleep is, or you know, when we sleep, there's a lot going on. I mean, that's why, uh, what helps aid in memory and a lot of things, things that you learn throughout the day. And I've woken up catching myself talking about something that I've looked up or that I was looking up that day, right? Well, I'm almost feeling like I've caught myself storing that type of information in my head. So I just don't see the analog between the two cases because, I mean, we can show like, you know, someone going through REM sleep or, or what the brain is doing, but then we could do the same type of like fMRI on just a dead person or someone going through that. And you're just not seeing anything analogous there. In fact, you're seeing the cessation of that type of a process. So I just, it seems like trivial to me. Okay. I was, uh, I, I read a few studies. I don't have them in front of me uh, about uh, upon the moment of death, uh, the brain neurons lighting up. Uh, uh, essentially, from there is the, no uh, such thing as a moment of death. Say that again. I'm so sorry. There is no such thing as a moment of death. Okay, so it's just a slow decay, and then the brain completely like shuts down if you turn the computer it's off. Not, is what it's not, you're saying? Well, I, I don't know. I haven't experienced it, but it's not. Um, the same in every circumstance. Some deaths are longer yeah. than others. If what you're saying is, from the point in time where I'm definitely dying but not yet dead, is it possible for me to achieve peace before I stop being able to experience anything? I don't know. I don't know how anybody knows. I don't even know what it means to say achieve peace. And and by the way, I'm even sorry, if you uh, could achieve, achieve peace, peace, is the I, wrong I, term. I, and even if you could achieve peace. I don't know that there's any guarantee that that would be the thing that you achieve. And what difference does it make if you're dead a second later? Uh, what I, that's what I was getting to and achieve peace. I apologize was not the right term. Uh, all I meant okay. was uh, that the few seconds uh, before you die, according, uh, not according, 
uh, the few seconds before you die could last a very, very long time in your subconscious. Oh, oh, okay. Normally, now what you're your asking? No. So, now what you're asking is, when my brain is dying, is it possible for me to perceive a virtual eternity of peace in that instant before death? Nobody fucking knows. Exactly. No matter no matter what religion you have, and is it is it bad for me? to uh yes. stir the apple cart of someone yes. who has a staunch belief uh and even if they're not you know if they're not uh, pontificating towards some other assholes and they're not as long as they're not like out there preaching and doing harm to the world is is me yes changing their beliefs in uh their subconscious a bad thing no but you have no business okay. changing their beliefs in their subconscious. They have a belief that they can't demonstrate, and which also, by the way, is unfalsifiable. So do you think you can disprove their their belief that eternity is going to happen before they die? Um, As far as because I come from a... No, you can't. It's an unfalsifiable denied. proposition. They, uh, they, are, they, they are mistaken to believe it without sufficient evidence, and you are mistaken to think you can falsify the unfalsifiable. Got you, but in our subconscious, we uh, there's the, the conscious subconscious barrier. Uh, uh, I'm maybe I'm beating on this drum too hard, but the fact that we can uh, I don't know how you describe it. Uh, there's a test that you can do where you can walk around looking for quarters uh, for a week, and then if you stop looking for quarters for a week, your subconscious still picks up on that. If they have a belief so strong that it hits their subconscious, uh, when they pass away, am I yeah uh, screwing up that uh, quarter cart? we can call it or whatever by uh showing them the reasons they're wrong i'm, I'm not really sure if i they're, understand if they're wrong there's no problem with showing them oh. why they're wrong yeah I was gonna say, I, i'm not really sure what's is, wrong with how are you gonna show them okay uh it was just a question and yeah i appreciate your answer and yeah uh it's not a problem that i have within myself it's a problem i have with uh trying to uh, explain to other people. Uh, look, look, Brandon. This this is the easiest way that I could in any way shape. This is the form. easiest. This is the easy way I could put it. One, I don't. Yeah, I mean, it, depending on the conception of their god. I mean, if they if they just tell you what they believe and there's like contradictory properties or something, then sure, you could show them why that's in some like logical tension or something. But but in most cases, like people aren't going to get offer up all that type of stuff. And you're going to claim that you can like falsify something that's presumably not falsifiable. But if you're worried about um, like having the conversation with the person and convincing them. Look, the way that I always take these conversations is like there's a line in the sand and you can cross over the line to have these conversations because I can't force you, right? And you don't, if you believe something, I don't know that you owe, you know, some random atheist or some person an explanation for your beliefs if you just want to keep that to yourself, right? I obviously want to have the conversation with person, people. Right? Yeah, I obviously want to have the conversation. I can't grab them by the shirt and force them to have a conversation with me. What you can do is you can analyze and have these conversations with people that are over uh, the line, right? That are that have crossed that line, and they're like, "I'm willing to have the conversation." Some cases you'll see that they want to tip, put one foot over the line, right, and, and say, oh, "Well, I have my faith, and you have this." But I mean, yeah. if you're worried, if somebody's willing to defend their beliefs, like I wouldn't be concerned about whether or not you change their mind because if they agree if they come to change their mind on the position like many people who are atheists or even hosts on shows like this you're, all you're gonna end up doing is changing their mind to a more defensible position and and i've never heard someone go wow i'm like really bummed out that i'm now an atheist uh, it was way better believing in all this stuff that i think is false now right and i just don't know you're going to get that type of response so it just seems like if the person's That's willing to have the conversation change people's minds that was sort of the uh, response that I had when I was into uh, uh, either a, what do you call it, a transcendental meditation or uh, actually uh, keeping a dream journal, et cetera, and realizing how long they were. And then I was, in my head, I was like, well, if I don't believe in anything, then where does my subconscious go? I guess was my main, uh, not question, but my question for other people and whether I should uh, mess with their brain by uh, giving my example. Oh my but God! I, I'm sorry. 
I'm you, sorry if I you, you, seem, um, you seem to think that you have more influence over the world than you do. You don't change people's minds and you're not responsible for other people changing their minds unless you're engaged in some sort of fucking corrupt uh, indoctrination. But if you just convince somebody that they don't have good reason for something, congratulations. You were just being honest. But don't sit around fretting Thank you. over the damage you're going to do okay. with the world with your big brained ideas when it takes 11 minutes to sort out, hey, is it possible for people to experience an eternity in the last moments prior to death? Gotcha. Nobody knows. Uh, and what do you think about the last moments of eternity before death? I guess is my last question. And uh, I know it's probably been a bore for you, but you guys have helped me a lot. I appreciate I'm, it. I'm, I'm glad it's, it's helpful. But yeah, with regard to what do I think? Uh, I have no idea. Okay. And, yeah, and, and I, I don't yeah, clearly, like, clearly what the brain does. Uh, clearly that's impossible. To die without. No, no, no. It's impossible okay. to experience an eternity before death because an eternity doesn't end. And that, by definition, yeah, yes, I don't mean an eternity. I mean a very long time is all. Well, so, yeah, there's totally no, not, there's not an eternity. But hey, some, thank you. I, hey, I, I, I feel I, like a, a near eternity on some of these calls. Thank you. Uh, probably mine too. No, not yours. Yours wasn't anywhere near an eternity. That was the good thing. I got to make it a joke at your expense without it actually being at your expense. There are some calls that do seem to take a long time, but not quite eternity. 